I've been putting this off for so long. I hate unpacking. I hate it. Let peace stress free. Welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Ashley and today we are going to be unpacking from my trip to Tulum. Yes, I'm milking it, I know. If you're new here or you may have just missed it, I went to Tulum for a week and I did a pack with me, which is what I'm going to be unpacking right now. But I also vlogged the whole time that I was there and I made a whole long 30 minute Yes, it's actually like 30 minutes <laughs> video is linked right here if you want to go watch it. I show everything that I do everywhere that I went to go eat and I don't know, I think it's a really cool video. I put a lot of time and like effort into editing it. Uh, so if you wanna go watch it, I would really appreciate if you did because I put so much work into it. And it'll be linked up here again. Yeah, it's there. <laughs> Today, we are going to be doing my least favorite part of going on vacation and that is unpacking. I've been putting this off until the last possible minute that I possibly could, but I really need to do it. If I was not making a video of this, I would probably not unpack for another month or so and just slowly pick things out of my suitcase. So I'm making a video to hopefully motivate me to unpack and I think just they're just fun to watch, I don't know. While I'm unpacking, I'm also gonna be talking to you about some like tips and tricks because this is my second time going to Tulum. So I wanted to share some things that I've noticed my two times there and some things that I've learned and just some tips and tricks to share with you all because I know when I posted my Tulum video, Kind of a lot of people actually commented that they were either going to Tulum or like wanted to go to Tulum. But everyone's going to Tulum, which good. I love it there. I want to. I want everyone to see it. But I do think that there's some things that, that you should know. I'm obviously not a pro. I've only been there twice, but I just wanted to share some things from my own experiences. I'm just gonna keep talking <laughs> to procrastinate because I really don't want to do it. Let's just get started. Ugh. I do not want to do this. This is what we're working with: a fully packed suitcase. My bag that I took is still packed. I just have clothes everywhere. <laughs> yeah, it's a mess. So obviously we're going to unpack everything first and then I'm actually going to wash everything that needs to be washed, everything we took with us and then the clothes that I've worn since then just so I can get it all done at once. And then once it's all done washing, we are going to put everything away and reorganize and clean my closet. So fun. <laughs> but before we do that, I did get a few packages while I was gone and something very out of character of me, I haven't opened them yet the whole week that I've been home. I usually open them immediately. So I thought that I would do a little unboxing since I think one of them is closed, so I have to wash them anyway. So let me show you what I got. Okay, so the clothing is from the Mayfair group. I just got like a sweat set. They restocked one that I really wanted and I had a discount code, so I got them because I really wanted them. I love the Mayfair Group sweat sets, just like the like materials that they use, the quality. This one actually feels different than the other one that I have, which is kind of annoying. And it's also dirty. Hopefully it'll come off when I wash it. These are the shorts that I got. They're just white and they have little doodles on them. And then I just got the matching sweatshirt. Their sweatshirts are always really big. I even got the petite size and this is like really big. But it just says, somebody loves you. So that's that. <laughs> And then this box is just from Adidas. It's this pair of shoes that I kept seeing ads for and I really, really wanted them. Look at how cute these are. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed with platform shoes. So these are, oh, these are amazing. I hope they fit. I went a little bit smaller because people were saying that they were really big. Let's try them on. Oh, they do fit. Look how cute these are. Ah! Okay, now let's actually get started. So I guess I will just work my way into the closet. That makes sense. Okay, so the first tip, I feel like this is gonna be so hard to like talk and do this. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about about Tulum was like driving and like cars. A lot of the roads are like bumpy, but aside from the roads not being like updated, frequently or like as frequently as we would expect like in the US I guess. Tulum is like currently being built up. A lot of the roads are just like unfinished and I think that that's something to be aware of especially when you're thinking about like where your hotel is or like your Airbnb or like whatever you're staying at. Guys I'll insert like a map right here so that you can see if your hotel is like over on like this side the they're building all the buildings over there there's like a bunch of construction so the roads are completely dirt and so if you're staying over there and you're renting a car which i do advise renting a car also so if you're renting a car i would suggest getting an suv it's just gonna make going over there a lot easier um especially like at night because there's no street lights over there or anything so it's really dark and you could go in a hole and the suvs you can just like take it a lot easier you know but i do recommend getting a car because i got a car both times that i went and honestly it was like so useful 
we literally this last time that i went i didn't pay attention the first time i don't think but this last time that i went my boyfriend and i saw people on like bikes or on like the little scooters it's so hot outside and like tulum looks really small and like everything's kind of close to each other and depending on where you are most things are close to each other but some things are like more than driving distance you should not be riding a bike it's gonna be really hard basically and i get that people probably want to go and do that for like the aesthetic and all of that but just like rent a bike and like go down like the street or something get a car it'll make your life so much easier <laughs> something to be mindful of when you're like driving in tulum is the fact that like there are rules and some people follow the rules and some people just kind of like drive like crazy i mean like everywhere i guess but there's very few signs telling you what the rules are. I think that that's really important to know because half the time you don't even know like what speed you're supposed to be going. So it is a little crazy. You just have to be like really like vigilant when you're driving over there, I guess. People just kind of like walk across the street and yeah. I also think that renting a car will save you money in the long run because the taxis can get pretty expensive. I mean, there are a lot of taxis around, but they can get pretty expensive. And parking isn't really much of an issue. Sometimes it is really crowded and it's hard to find places to park but you can park on like all of like the back streets and just like walk like a block or something so yeah overall i just think it would be a lot easier to get a car i guess just be mindful of like what kind of car you're getting depending on like where you're staying like what you're going to need and the places that you're going as well like the activities that you're going to go and do and stuff because some of those also have like dirt roads it's just not 100 percent the same as like driving in the u.s as it should not be because it's not the u.s <laughs> also in the hotel zone area i do recommend taking a taxi though because there's a bunch of cars. It's pretty much just like one long stretch of road. There's not a lot of parking over there and cars are just like parked on the side while people are trying to drive and it's like a really narrow road and that part was just crazy. <laughs> I would definitely recommend taking a taxi over there because it's just, it's pretty hectic. Especially if you're going to stay over there because it's kind of hard to find like parking. Like if you're going to like go out to eat or something. Look at how fast that went by. We already got one done. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is like the people in Tulum. So everybody in Tulum that I've had experiences with and like spoken to and whatever they're all super super nice everybody seems like really willing to like help nobody seems like mad that there's like a bunch of like tourists in their city or anything like that like they're all really really nice and like willing to help and all that kind of stuff but just something to keep in mind is that everybody appreciates a good tip you know what i mean <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't want to be like oh like tip them but you know what i mean like you don't have to they'll still do it anyways but it's just like nice like just to say thank you <laughs> they would i'm sure they would really appreciate it and then also kind of related to like the people of tulum i just want to talk about how like safe tulum is I can't speak for the rest of mexico because i have not been to the rest of mexico but tulum is very 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 safe i have never felt unsafe in tulum the two times that i went oh my god like i'm a pro oh, but the two times that i went i felt really safe i felt safe leaving ow oh. I just bit my nail. I felt really safe like leaving my bag while I was like going in a cenote or going in like the lagoon or whatever. And I felt safe like leaving my car on like the like back streets, like the side street areas, not like the main street where all the shops and stuff are, but like the back streets where like people live and everything. I felt safe leaving my car there. And not this past time that I went because we there was no nightlife going on because of COVID. But the last time that I went, I didn't feel unsafe being like a girl. I was with another girl too. I didn't even have my boyfriend last time. But being like two girls alone in Tulum, like intoxicated. You know what I mean? Like the guys were never like creepy and like it, it, it just, it, it's very safe. I never felt unsafe there. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I did read before I went the first time that Tulum is actually very, very safe for female travelers it's one of the safest places in mexico and i think it was like one of the safest places in the world oh i need scissors Don't quote me on that last part but i think that that's what i read something along those lines so if safety is like something you're concerned about or like the people being like weird or rude or trying to like scam you or something it's it's really safe the people are really nice it's pretty much fine so another thing that i want to talk about is the environment which is actually something that i am really passionate about just like in general and that's something that i love about tulum is that they are really like conscious of their environmental impact and they try it seems like they try to do what they can to reduce their impact on their environment they really care about their wildlife and their marine life and it just seems like a very like eco-friendly place i don't really know how to explain it <laughs> i didn't know that when i went the first time obviously because i had never been there <laughs> so something that i actually did this past time when i went was i brought things like my reusable straw and my reusable silverware and 
oh, a reusable water bottle. And then when we got there, I just got like big jugs of water and I poured them into my reusable water bottle and I used that throughout the day. And so while I was still creating some waste and obviously I was eating like snacks and stuff, I was, I felt like I was reducing the amount of waste that I was using, if that makes sense. And so, I mean, you should do this everywhere you go, not just Tulum, but I think it's really important to any place that you visit, you should leave it the same as it was as you got, when you got there, if not better than when you got there, if that makes sense. So if there's some like trash on the ground or something, just like pick it up and throw it in the trash can, you know? It takes two seconds, it doesn't hurt anybody, it helps the world. But yeah, that's just something I wanted to bring up. Um, something that means a lot to me and that I feel like is really important. Just remember when you're visiting like anywhere, like you're going into other people's communities. So just don't mess it up. You're visiting, you know what I mean? But then I guess the last thing that I wanted to talk about was like the things that you can do in Tulum and how like where you're staying kind of plays into what people end up doing from my experiences just like knowing people who have gone and like meeting people there and stuff we are making progress on this bag like so quickly the time is flying by oh yeah so there's a bunch of places that you can stay in tulum but the main ones are like the hotel zone area which is right along the beach something to be aware of when you're staying there is that the ones right on the beach i don't think i'm pretty sure all of them are not allowed to have air conditioning that's what i heard um, and what I've seen from the ones that I've like seen there that they don't have air conditioning and that's because the air conditioning actually harms the wildlife and the marine life that lives nearby so not having air conditioning is very important for like preserving the environment but um, not so great when you like to sleep with the AC on <laughs> or when like because it's just really hot over there when you just are really hot from the day and you just want to like sit in the AC you know what I mean? Hotel Zone has a bunch of restaurants a bunch of like little bar things like bar restaurants and it's just like a good time, but it's mostly like chill, if that makes sense. Not a lot of activities to do over there. It's mostly just like hanging out by the pool, drinking, like going to nice restaurants. Everything's more expensive over there because that's where all the tourists are. But a positive, if you don't speak Spanish, is that most people there from what I've seen speak English, like who work there. So that can be really useful if you don't speak any Spanish, because like when you go into Tulum, sometimes there's places where the people don't speak any English, and it can be really, like difficult if you don't speak any Spanish. <laughs> we finished it. So yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends like what you want to get out of the trip. But then there's the downtown area, which things are a lot more affordable there. And then like nightlife wise, it's not just like drinking and going to restaurants during non COVID times. So there's like dancing and it's a lot more like sweaty and like, you know what I mean? The hotel zone area just seems like bougier to me, in my opinion. There are also places to stay in the downtown area. I don't know much about them because I haven't stayed there, but they're just like along the main street. And then there's the part that I showed you earlier. It's called La Valletta, I think. That's what it says on the map, at least. I don't know. Um, but that part they're building up, that part is very like nature-y right now. I don't know if it's gonna change, but the roads are unfinished, obviously, and there's not any restaurants around there. So you kind of just have to, like you stay over there and then you have to drive into either downtown or to the hotel zone area to get like food and stuff. What I've found when people visit and from people that I've like spoken to who are there is that people who stay in the hotel zone area very rarely leave the hotel zone area, which is fine if that's all you want out of your trip is like relaxation. But also like there's just so much more to Tulum. I mean, it's nice to sit on the beach too, if that's what you want to do. That's just not what I like to do in my vacations, personally. There's like cenotes, and there's lagoons, and there's like Mayan ruins, which are so cool. And you can get like a guided tour and like learn all about like the history of like Tulum and the Mayans and all that kind of stuff. And like envision like the buildings that used to be there that they built. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I probably should have been putting my laundry in here the whole time. Oh well. But yeah, so while I think Tulum is a great place to go and like relax and hang out, I think you can do that as well as like enjoy like the adventure that Tulum offers because I think the adventure that it offers is really unique from like a lot of other places I think I mean I haven't been everywhere I don't know <laughs> yeah I think it's important to decide beforehand because some things you do have to book like beforehand as well so I think it's important to decide before you go like what experience you want to have in Tulum and kind of base where you're staying around that because like I said the people that I know who have stayed in the hotel zone area they never really leave the hotel zone <laughs> area you know they don't get to see the rest of Tulum really also if you are staying in the hotel zone area 
it's important to like look at where you are in proximity to like the main street because like I said the hotel zone street is just one long street and there's one street that like enters to the hotel zone area and then there's another street like really far down I think I haven't gone up it but I think it can take you back to the main area as well I'm also pretty sure it's a dirt road though but I'm not 100% sure on that don't take my word for that but basically it's just a really difficult place to get in and out of so I think that's why most people end up staying over there. So I think that's just something to keep in mind if you're like planning your trip is like, what do you want to do? What do you want to see? What do you want to experience? And all that kind of stuff. You can always drive into the hotel zone area and it's a lot more convenient in my opinion. I'm just not a fan of like staying there. Like while we were there, we drove in and we had like a nice dinner and we were looking for some like nightlife, but there is good food. It's just more expensive. So yeah, I think that's all the tips and tricks that I had for Tulum. Um, let me know down below if you have any questions though, and I can totally answer them to the best of my abilities. I've only been there twice, like I said. That was very efficient because I didn't even notice that I finished organizing, like cleaning up everything. So now I need to wash this and then I guess afterwards, I guess we'll just do a time lapse of me putting everything away because I don't think I have much more to say. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will be more than happy to answer them to the best of my abilities. Also, while we're here and finishing talking, don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you're liking this video or if you watched till the end and you decide that you like it. Give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it and I would like to know if you like the video. Also, if you want to see more videos like this and from me, then feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you along here. We have a good time. We organize a lot, even though I don't like it. There will definitely be more videos like this, because my closet is always a mess. And I always need to make a video to motivate myself to clean it. <laughs> Alright, let's go start the laundry. I was actually going to wait to put everything away until it was like all washed, but I think it would be a better use of my time if I start to put the stuff away now that I don't need to wash. Like the stuff that was just like on the floor and stuff. And then I'll put the stuff that's washing now away later. I guess that's what we'll do. I don't know. Not very good at cleaning. Give me a break. <laughs> oh okay real quick i'm pretty much done hanging everything up that's not like to wash or being washed but I wanted to show you this really quick. So as I mentioned in my pack with me video, my mom was actually coming to stay with my dog for the week, which I'm so, so grateful for. And she also got a vacation out of it, but I'm really thankful that she did that and was able to do that. And yeah, so I don't really talk about my parents a lot on here, um, but my mom loves to knit. She knits like amazing things, sweaters, hats. Whenever people have babies, she makes like little like boots and like overalls and sweaters and it's, she's just really great at it. <laughs> she actually made me three shirts which is insane. She made me, she knitted, like hand knitted three shirts throughout the week. It's a, it's crazy. And she also made me a bunch of food and like cookie dough and this like really good like truffle mayonnaise thing. But I wanted to show you the shirts because they're super cute. So this is the first one. I like this side the best because I like pink, but it's just like a pink to orange kind of like ombre thing. The back is mostly orange. And then the straps are just these like two little straps. I think it's so cute. Yeah, it's a little, just a little crop tank top. And this tank top is just like hot pink. It has the same two straps, but they like crisscross in the back, which is cute. Uh, and then it like rolls at the bottom. I don't know, just a cute little detail. And then the next one, I do like all of them, but the next one, honestly, she knows this too, is my favorite. <laughs> it's this little like one shoulder, like it's like blue and green or like, I don't know if that's green, but it kind of looks green. Or it could go this way. Look at how cute. And it's just a little one shoulder moment. Oh, I love this one. I think this is, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, anyways, I just wanted to show off how talented my mom is. <laughs> so I've pretty much got everything put away that's not like currently being washed or put to wash. So um, I guess, just wait for the laundry to finish. See you in a little bit. It's a new day. Okay, here is the final product. It's so clean, it's so organized. My luggage is all back where it's supposed to be. Beautiful, and there's a floor, amazing. So my bathroom counter is still a mess, but that's 
for another day. <laughs> thank you all so much for helping me unpack for my vacation. Thank you for helping me organize my closet and do my laundry and all that good stuff. I really appreciate you being here with me. It makes it a lot less lonely and a lot more fun to do. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I know I kind of talked a lot in the beginning, but hopefully if you are planning to go to Tulum or you are thinking about going to Tulum at some point in your life, hopefully those tips can be helpful. And if I left anything out and you have any questions about anything, feel free to comment down below and I will answer to the best of my abilities. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give me a thumbs up down below so that I know. And if you want to see more videos like this and from me, then feel free to subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out my Tulum vlog. It's linked in the beginning of this video. I'll link it down in the description. You can just go to my channel. It's my last video. <laughs> or if you don't want to watch a travel vlog and you just want to see more videos like this, I have a pack with me. You can watch that. It's kind of this in reverse, I guess. All right. Thank you all so, so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.